So let's talk about smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is called smooth because when we look at it in a microscope, we do not see striations. So this sets smooth muscle apart from the other types of muscles that we've talked about. Smooth muscle uh, looks smooth when you look at it in a microscope. So this means if there are no striations, there are no sarcomeres present. And that's a kind of an unusual thought. Um, we're used to thinking about sarcomeres as the sort of contractile units inside of muscle cells. Well, with smooth muscle, um, there's a different sort of structure in place. It turns out smooth muscle does still have actin and myosin. However, it's arranged a little bit differently. So when we look at the, at the layout, um, they're not laid out in necessarily a, a linear pattern. Rather, it's kind of, it's more of a network of actin and myosin filaments. And this is a very useful thing. If you think about where smooth muscle is located, let's just think of the digestive tract for a minute. Um, so the digestive tract, it, 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 when we eat a lot of food, uh, these are cells that are going to be stretched. And think of a normal muscle cell. If a normal muscle cell is really stretched out really long, um, that's going to make it in some cases impossible for that muscle to contract, right? If you think about the sarcomere structure, uh, myosin and actin overlap, myosin and actin, excuse me, overlap. As soon as they are stretched past each other, there's no way for contraction to take place. But if instead we have this sort of network pattern, hey, it's all right if the cell is stretched in one direction, we've got actin and myosin connected in the other direction as well. They can still contract. So this network pattern allows contraction even when these cells are really stretched out and distended. So that's a very good thing, very useful thing in the context of where smooth muscle is located. The cross bridge formation is a little bit different in smooth muscle. So quick review, um, just mental review back to skeletal muscles. We said that contraction goes something like this. Okay, calcium floods out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum Calcium goes over, binds to troponin. Troponin then rolls away, takes tropomyosin with it, rolls out of the way, and then a cross bridge can form between myosin and actin. All right, that was skeletal muscle. What's different here? Well, instead of troponin being involved, smooth muscle has a, a different protein. It's called calmodulin. Calmodulin, that name should ring a bell. That was in one of our second messenger systems, um, which you can go back and, and review if that's not ringing any bells. But anyway, um, calmodulin is kind of there in place of troponin in smooth muscle. And what calmodulin does is it causes a phosphorylation event to happen. And that's the same as when we talked about it as a second messenger in chapter 11. Um, it was part of the phospholipase C second messenger system. Anyway, calmodulin activates a kinase and that kinase then phosphorylates um, myosin in smooth muscle. Okay, so that's a, a very different mechanism for contraction. Uh, it's the phosphorylation of myosin, which then enables cross bridge formation to act in. So different mechanism. Um, this is interesting because this, this alternative mechanism that smooth muscles use, this allows a contraction to be sustained. It's sort of like this, uh, this cross bridge can be held in a, in a latched state and it doesn't take very much energy to maintain that contraction, that latched state. Um, so that's a, that's a useful thing. And this all ties into like, what's the function of smooth muscle? Um, another example of where smooth muscle is located is in the uterus. So during contractions during childbirth, this needs to be a contraction that can be sustained. Uh, it needs to not be just a quick transient thing. It has to be s sustained in order to push the baby out. Um, so a different mechanism makes sense in terms of what's the purpose of smooth muscle. So where is this found? Again, this is in the digestive organs, it's in the reproductive tract, um, it's also in the, in the bronchioles, it's in blood vessel walls, so it really is throughout the body. Um, and in all cases, what, what it does is produces these sort of peristaltic waves just to sort of propel the contents along. Whatever the contents is, it depends on, on which organ we're talking about, um, but this is a type of muscle that helps to move things along through the body. couple of different types of smooth muscle. Smooth muscles can exist in what's called a single unit or a multi-unit form. A single unit 
Um, what this is referring to is just the fact that these cells sort of behave as a single unit. If you look at these smooth muscle cells, they have lots and lots of gap junctions between them, and this means that they tend to behave sort of as a single unit. If there's an action potential in one of these cells, um, then that is going to very quickly be transferred to all of these other cells due to those electrical connections. So um, these are the types of smooth muscles that we have in the digestive tract as well as the uterus. Um, this allows these muscles to act sort of in unison. The other type, multi-unit, these are um, smooth muscles that act more independently, more individually. They do not have the gap junctions between, and so instead they have to pretty much individually be activated by a nerve. This requires nerve stimulation in order to get these to contract. Uh, where is this located? A good example is in the eye, the ciliary muscles that control the lens of the eye. This allows much finer control um, in terms of how the lens is formed and shaped. If, if each muscle cell around the eye can be activated individually. This allows much better focusing ability than if they all had to contract together, uh, sort of all at once. So two different types, single unit versus multi-unit.